Welcome to task 4. In this task, we have to add LR block, which is latch reset block, to the safety circuit and use manual reset switch to reset the LR block. And then we have to add an indication to the manual switch when reset operation is ready. So we have to use a manual reset switch in the last circuit. So if you haven't seen the last circuit video, I would request you to go back and check what we have done before. So we're going to add a manual reset button to the current circuit. Okay. Now, just for information, this manual reset switch is connected to IO4, input output 4. So this is giving signal to IO4. Remember that. And then we are getting a signal from our safety SC10 controller and IO3 is connected to input 3 of this manual reset switch because the switch is programmable and the switch can give you different colors of led lights on it so if you see at the moment this is this is off so you can have different colors on it so you can have red yellow green cyan blue magenta white so in our case our terminal number four which is input three is connected to io3 of our safety controller this is just for information so these two information is mandatory and you get this information when you're wiring your input safety button to your SC10 controller. Okay, so keeping in this mind, we will program it. So let's see, first we take the controller input IO4 with the switch. So I will go back to my equipment and go to plus. And remember, we talked about it in the presentation. This input is a non-safety input. This is just for reset. It's not a safety sensor, not a safety input. So we call it non-safety input. Now we're going to select manual reset. In manual reset, just remember the diagram. This is just single terminal connection to IO4. So here I will select my IO4 terminal. Everything else is okay. And I can re rename that. I can call it so MR is manual reset one, which is okay in my case, nothing to change it. Click okay. So the input is here. And one thing more we have to connect, we have to connect IO3, which is giving, which is telling us it's ready to reset. And it's super easy to do that. All you have to do is click on plus. And now we take the status outputs, status outputs, remember that. Status output, we will select waiting for manual reset. So they have already predefined input for that, which makes it super easy. Click on this one and you can see this is in status output and this is connected to where? IO3. So select your input, IO3 and select which manual reset button, which is M0MR1, which we defined in the last step. So this is the status and this is saying ready to reset. So I will just write here reset and click OK. So once you do that, you have it here. And now all you have to do is go to the functional view. Remember the task we have to make LR block. OK, so the LR block you can find and you can connect anywhere in this empty blocks. OK, so we have to add LR block for this AND gate and LR block for this EM stop. So we need two LR blocks. So I go here plus and then you will find your logic blocks here you can see if you see lr no it's not here and it's here latch reset block and you can rename that lr1 in this case i will use default settings click ok this block is here now we can delete this connection and connect this output of this and gate to the input and this is our reset so you can bring this reset down connect it here this is connected to my LR block and then you can connect this directly to the input. So now this button will reset this LR block. Now what this LR block will do, this will latch the output and this will also unlatch the output. I will show you in a while. So I need one more LR block for this EM stop. So I can take that here again, going to latch reset block, LR2, pretty fine. Delete this connection and connect that to input. And now I need a reset. I can use the same input as a reset to this block. So I have one reset button to reset two LR blocks. Looks perfect. Now we're gonna download this program to the controller. Sending the configuration as not resolved. Let's see what is the problem. Configuration required base module FA2 or higher. 
connect LR2. Oh, sorry, we forgot to connect that. <laughs> Downloading now. So the software is quite intelligent. It tells you the errors when you make in the program. Save the configuration, the project, enter the password, click OK. Continue, output will be off. Confirm your selection and then everything looks fine. Close. And now what I have to do is I have to restart the controller. So I will take off the 24 volt again. Every time you download the program, you have to restart the controller and bring that, bring it back. And just to get to online mode, I have to click on this button here, live mode. When you go to live mode, now you will see you have two inputs coming, but output is not set because we have to reset the blocks once you start the program. And one more thing I forgot to explain before we try this circuit, this input M0 MR1 have two types of configuration. So if I go to advanced, it has non-monitored and monitored mode. In monitor mode, it will monitor that the input should be on between 0.5 to 2 seconds. If input is on less than 0.5 seconds, it will ignore that. If input is on more than 2 seconds, it, it will ignore that. It has to be between these time. And this time is by default in this controller. Non-monitor will not monitor this configuration. It will just monitor if the signal is true or not. So this is right now on monitor. Okay, and let's go to live mode again. So I'm going to reset it. So you can see that the reset is required and the color is blue. Very nice. So I press it. And now my system is, my blocks are reset, my outputs are true. So you can see that RO1 and RO2 is true. Now these will get false if any of the safety circuits gives a signal. So let's try with this one. Output is off. Now if I bring back this sensor again, output will not get true unless we reset the circuit. This is the important part we have understood using LR block. So we have to reset the block again using an input. This will reset the output. So my output is true now. Next time, let's try with this one. Again, the output is false. We bring back the sensor. Sensor looks okay. I got the blue light. And again, the outputs are true again. Let's try with the e-stop now. We press the e-stop. And you can see that when the e-stop is pressed, you will not get the blue signal here which means you have to solve your safety inputs. You have to solve the problems in your safety inputs. So you have to reset the button. And when all the safety inputs are true, then you get a blue light, which means now manual reset is required, enabled to actuate your RO2. Right, now I want to show you if you press the RO2 longer than two seconds, what will happen? So I break the circuit, bring it back, now I press it, nothing happens because this is monitored. It monitors the time, how much time this has been executed. This is another safety feature that only authorized people knows how to reset the circuits. The people who are not trained to reset the safety circuits should not do that. So this was less than 0.5 seconds. And now the outputs are true again. So this is about task four in which we have added LR block and we have added an indication for manual switch when reset operation is ready. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we'll see the last task. We indicate the fault of any inputs by red color indication on manual reset switch. In this video, we will see how to indicate any fault in the sensor. And I'm gonna show you a very interesting way to see the fault. See you in the next video. Thank you.